it really is amaz amazing how quick the time goes. That's what the old woman said when she knocked the clock off the mantelpiece. She said, time flies. And so it does. Now that's the worst joke you'll hear today, unless Mary Dugan starts telling jokes. This evening I chose different readings. I chose the readings of Pentecost. And it was just maybe to reflect a little bit on the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does in the life of the church and in our own lives. And there are several references in the Old Testament to the Holy Spirit. But I'll just mention a few from the New Testament. And starting with Our Lady. And remember when the angel Gabriel came to her and asked her to be the mother of Christ. She said, how can this come about? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will cover you with his shadow. And we know that Mary was always open to the promptings and to the direction of the Holy Spirit in our life. And as she sets out fairly quickly and leaves Nazareth and goes to the hill country of Judea, she goes into Zachariah's house and she greets Elizabeth. And Elizabeth says, as soon as your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And then she said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. She had a wonderful hymn of praise, again, inspired by God's Holy Spirit. Just as Simeon in the temple was inspired by God's Holy Spirit to receive Jesus and recognize him as the Christ. And in the life of Jesus himself, his hidden life ends when he goes to be baptized in the River Jordan. And then we're told that the heavens opened and it appeared as a dove coming upon him. The Holy Spirit came upon him and then the voice of the Father is heard, this is my son, the beloved, he enjoys my favour, listen to him. At the, in the Acts of the Apostles, we have several instances of the Holy Spirit working in the life of the church. Just before that, we had, in his final, in the gospel today, Jesus breathed on the apostles and said, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Receive the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit in you will give you the power to forgive sin. And the apostles continued in Pentecost, we see the, the tremendous change in the life of the apostles from being frightened men. They openly go into the countryside and proclaim, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. You crucified him. You crucified him. But he is risen. What a transformation in the life of the apostles. And the, the apostles were very conscious of the promptings of the Holy Spirit in their life. We want to read the Acts of the Apostles or read any of the letters of the New Testament. And in the church today, just one thing, before the consecration of the Mass, we say, send forth your spirit like the Jew fall, to change these elements into the body and blood of Christ, bread and water. So, in confirmation, we received the Holy Spirit, fullness of God's Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that Jesus received at his baptism. And that Spirit is given to us for a reason. It's given to us to help us to grow closer to Jesus and to the Father and to strengthen and to guard our own souls. Now, 
We are always say temples of the Holy Spirit. And when somebody dies, we reverence that body and incense it as a mark of respect because it was the body, it was the temple of God's Holy Spirit. We all remember our confirmation and we were given this great gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know I've shared this before, but I'll share it again. Some of you may not have heard it. And this is true. I came from a very rural part of Mayo, and there were six or seven primary schools. And every year the bishop would come on the day before confirmation and examine us to see if we knew what we should know to be confirmed. And he would sit on his throne inside the altar rails, and we would form a semicircle. And I was placed first to answer the first question because I kind of knew the catechism fairly well and the teacher thought we'd put the bishop in good form. And I'm standing there with my new jacket on for confirmation and the church is full of people and I'm standing next to the candelabra and nobody would tell me that my jacket was on fire. <laughs> Smouldering away beautifully. But you couldn't disturb the bishop it didn't matter about Dominic getting roasted alive. So there was a big hole in my jacket. And the next day, when I went to be confirmed, I was going up like this. So I really was confirmed with fire. <laughs> but what do we remember of our confirmation? And what change has it made in our lives? There's a lot of preparation for confirmation in our school. There's a lot of preparation in our parishes. But then do we just walk out and say, well... I have received the Holy Spirit and I'll keep him locked away and that'll be fine. No, the Holy Spirit is given to us to help us grow in holiness, to help us to mature as Christians, to help us to come to know the face of Jesus in people that we meet and people that we see. So how do we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit? Well, we open our hearts... <clears throat> First of all, by being in the state of grace. Because the Holy Spirit and mortal sin cannot exist side by side. If we are living in mortal sin, then we're saying we don't want the Holy Spirit in our lives. We don't want to grow closer to God. We're cutting him out of our lives. So the first thing we need to do is, is change our lives and invite the Holy Spirit to come and guide us and to help us. And then invite the Holy Spirit when we're praying. You know, it, I feel it's all very important to start our prayer asking for the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit. We're told in Scripture again that the Spirit comes to our aid in moments of weakness and helps us to pray in a way we're unable to pray ourselves. So the Spirit of God is given to us and if we look to a model of openness to the Spirit of God, we look to Jesus and to Mary and to the early Christians. You know, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, has not been diluted down through the years. He comes with the same power today as he came upon the apostles. He comes with the same mission, but sometimes... We put barriers in his way. So tonight, I would just encourage everybody to open their hearts to the Holy Spirit of God, to guide them, to bless us, and to direct us to Jesus. And so maybe if you just remain seated now and for a moment, we'll pray. Just remain seated. Lord Jesus, you told us when you were going away that you would not leave us orphans, that you would send the Holy Spirit to teach us and to guide us and to direct us in life. You actually said, it is better that I go because if I do not go, the Spirit will not come, but when I do ascend to the Father, I will send him to you. Lord, we so often have gone through life not thinking about the power of the Spirit you have given us. We reflect on the Father and the Son. But we won't spend much time invoking the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to realize that 
Your Holy Spirit is our strength, our guidance against everything that's happening in our world today. Teach us to pray, listening and being prompted by your Holy Spirit in our lives. Come Holy Spirit, we pray. And so Lord, tonight we, we ask you to bless each one of us with a great outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. That we may invoke your help in every situation. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have turned away from you, who have abandoned the faith and opened their hearts and their lives to other spirits that are not of you. Touch them, Lord, and call them back to you. Lord, hear us. In this the month of November, we remember the many pilgrims who journeyed with us to Medjugorje down through the years and have now passed on to their eternal reward. We pray that they may be happy with you in heaven. Lord, hear us. For all of our sake, that you will touch them with your healing hand. Lord, hear us. And for a friend of mine who had been undergoing cancer treatment and thought everything was fine, but discovered that more tests are needed, that I offer this Mass for him tonight, that you will bless him and his family. Lord, hear us. And Lord God, now with confidence we ask you to grant all the prayers which we make in and through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>